welcome to the Money Collier Report. I'm Money Collier. Preachers of Lordship Salvation are not Calvinists. Greetings to you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. May God richly bless your studies in His Holy Bible. In this video, I would like to make eight general points concerning the heresy of Lordship Salvation as well as teach the correct view of justification by faith alone, what we call sola fide. Point 1. Lordship Salvation Preachers are not Calvinists. Preachers of Lordship Salvation do not hold to Reformed theology. They teach salvation by grace and works. They teach justification by faith and works. And that is the Roman Catholic soteriology. That is what Roman Catholics teach when it comes to salvation. That is not Reformed theology. For example, Lordship Salvation proponents repudiate anyone who insists that our good works play no role in our justification before God. Consider J.I. Packer. He lived from 1926 to 2020. He was a popular Anglican minister. He made a career teaching the heresy of Lordship Salvation. Writing in the foreword of John MacArthur's book titled The Gospel According to Jesus, Packer states the following, and I quote, Those who reject Lordship salvation choose to keep works out of justification, end quote. The Gospel According to Jesus, taken from the foreword, page Roman numeral 9. Now think about what Packer just said. He wants the readers of MacArthur's book to know from the very beginning that Lordship Salvation teaches salvation by grace and works. He wants the readers to know that Lordship Salvation teaches justification by faith and works, and that is exactly why he pointed out that those people who are in opposition to Lordship Salvation insist that our good works play no role in justification before God. He's correct. Reformed theology teaches that justification before God is by faith alone. See Romans 3. Verse 28. Now, teachers of Lordship Salvation will at times say that, that they believe in sola fide, justification by faith alone. But when they are about that, then they are simply paying lip service to their young audience of new Calvinists. Neo-Calvinists would be a better term for these followers of Lordship Salvation, or what I call nominal Calvinists. For while they enjoy using some Calvinist terminology, they are oblivious to the basics of Calvinist thought. By the rudiments of Calvinist thought, I am referring to sola scriptura, the Bible alone is the word of God, and sola fide, the sinners are justified before God by belief alone. Point two, belief alone in the gospel alone is sufficient to save. Perpetrators of Lordship Salvation contradict salvation by grace alone and suggest that belief alone in the gospel alone is not sufficient to save. For example, consider Lordship Salvation teacher Miller J. Erickson. He writes the following in his very popular Systematic Theology, and I quote, It is not enough simply to believe in Jesus and accept the offer of grace. End quote. Christian Theology page 938. Erickson's inescapable implication is that our works are also needed for justification. This justification by faith and works heresy is exactly why so many followers of Lordship Salvation live in constant dreadful fear. They know their best works are sinful filthy rags, as explained in Isaiah chapter 64 verse 6. They know God's law condemns their imperfect works, as taught in James chapter 2, verse 10. But Lordship Salvation preachers keep giving these contrite sinners the law. Now to give a contrite sinner the law is a mixing of law and gospel. The Protestant Reformation taught continuously that you are to give the gospel to a contrite sinner, not the law. If you give a contrite sinner the law, instead of the gospel, you will only drive that sinner into despondency and despair. The Bible says, quote, 
For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. But the Scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up under the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith." End quote. Galatians chapter 3 verse 21 through 24 This lordship salvation nonsense that belief alone in the finished work of Christ alone is not sufficient logically contradicts Romans 3:28, Galatians 2:16, Ephesians 2, 1 through 9, Titus 3 verses 4 through 5 and 2 Timothy 1:9 Anything that contradicts the Bible's teaching on justification is necessarily false. Lordship salvation contradicts the Bible's teaching on justification. Therefore, Lordship salvation is necessarily false. Even so, advocates of Lordship salvation will reinforce their heresy by appealing to James chapter 2, verse 26, just as any Roman Catholic priest would do. You need to think about that. They send their poor, scared followers to James 2.26 and tell them the Apostle James is speaking of justification before God. Now, the Apostle James is teaching no such thing in that passage. James is teaching, however, how one Christian shows another that his profession is credible by teaching correctly and by helping our fellow man. How Christ justifies sinners before the court of God is never mentioned in chapter 2 of James. What does such papist exegesis tell us about lordship salvation preachers and authors? Well, obviously it indicates that they do not have a credible profession of faith. They should not be teaching and should, in fact, be disciplined. Point 3. The Bible's doctrines of grace matter. Of course, Lordship Salvation proponents often say it doesn't matter if one is an Arminian or a Calvinist in his theology. Consider Paul Washer. Washer frequently does this in his sermons. When they do this, Lordship Salvation teachers are mocking their audiences. But most in their audience are too dull to realize what is being said most people today haven't read the history of the Protestant Reformation. They don't know the history of theology. They don't even usually know what Arminianism is or what Reformed theology is. Look, the doctrines of Calvinism are based on Scripture alone, and that does matter. All the teachings in the system of Christianity are explicitly stated or logically deduced from the Bible alone. Men like William Tyndale were murdered because of sola scriptura. Justification by faith alone matters. For this is exactly how God justifies sinners. See Romans 3.28 and Galatians 2.16. How many were murdered by Roman Catholics during the Protestant Reformation and the Counter-Reformation because they held the sola fide. The doctrine of God's absolute predestination of all things also matters. See Isaiah chapter 46 verses 10 through 11 and Ephesians chapter 1 verse 11. These are not unimportant teachings. To suggest that it does not matter if one believes in reformed theology or free will while pretending to be a Calvinist is to play the part of a blithering idiot Calvin would call such teaching brutish stupidity. Some have told me, but, but Paul Washer cries for sinners. Really? And how exactly does that indicate that he is teaching sola fide? Consider the Pope. Should the Pope shed passionate tears because he wants you to believe in justification by faith and works? rather than sola fide. Does that make him correct? Does that convince you that you need to become a Roman Catholic? I hope not. Let the devil cry for souls, 
we are justified by belief alone. Point four. The gospel in its proper sense demands nothing from us, but gives freely eternal life. Teachers of the heresy of lordship salvation often tell us that the gospel in its saving sense is a demand for our good works. They call this a call to obedience. They say the gospel calls us to obey. But it is no such thing. John MacArthur has gotten wealthy telling people the following, and I quote, The gospel Jesus proclaimed was a call to discipleship, a call to follow him in submissive obedience, end quote. The Gospel According to Jesus, chapter 1, page 27. The Gospel in its narrow and saving sense is only the good news of God's free grace in Christ alone for us. The Gospel is not a call to obedience. The Gospel is not a set of commands for us to obey. It is the law that calls us to obey, not the Gospel. The Bible says, quote, For the law was given by Moses. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ, in quote. John, chapter 1, verse 17. The gospel is a report. See Isaiah, chapter 53, verse 1. The gospel is a report comprised of true propositions concerning who Jesus is and what he alone did for our justification. The gospel is declarative, not imperative. And that is exactly why Paul says, quote, I declare unto you the gospel, end quote. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1. The gospel is not about what we do. The gospel demands nothing from us. For, quote, the law is not of faith, end quote. Galatians 3, 12. On the other hand, the gospel freely gives us the imputed righteousness of Christ alone. Point five. We are not justified by our commitment to obey Jesus. Lordship salvation heretics redefine saving faith to include the sinner's obedience. They use the term commitment to do this. By commitment, they are referring to their character, their allegiance, their faithfulness, and their obedience. Wayne Grudem, a popular Lordship salvation teacher, writes the following, and I quote, this definition emphasizes that saving faith is not just a belief in facts, but personal trust in Jesus to save me. The definition emphasizes personal trust in Christ, not just belief in facts about Christ. I can believe, but have no personal commitment or dependence on anyone. This understanding of true New Testament faith, we may now appreciate that when a person comes to Christ, comes to trust in Christ, all three elements must be present. Understanding, approval, trust. This personal decision of my will to depend on or put my trust in Christ as my Savior is something done with my heart, the central faculty of my entire being that makes commitments for me as a whole person. End quote. Systematic Theology, pages 710 through 712. The emphasis is mine. John MacArthur, the champion of Lordship Salvation, tells us it is a mistake to think our obedience is not an essential part of saving faith or that our obedience is outside of saving faith. MacArthur uses the term extraneous to communicate this. He says, and I quote, Those who teach that obedience and submission are extraneous to saving faith are forced to make a firm but unbiblical distinction between salvation and discipleship, end quote. The Gospel According to Jesus, chapter 1, pages 35 through 36. Actually, those people who insist that our obedience is not part of the definition of saving faith are making a distinction between law and gospel. Uh, MacArthur does not believe in law-gospel distinction, and that's why he says and teaches that your obedience is part of your saving faith. When he does that again, remember, he is redefining salvation by faith alone, justification by faith alone, to actually be justification by faith and works, the Catholic view. So when Lordship Salvation Advocates say they believe in salvation by faith alone, what they really mean is that they believe in salvation by faith and works. That's insidious. In contrast, Biblical Christianity, or Calvinism, teaches that our good works are not part of saving faith, 
but the result of saving faith. Commitment or allegiance to Jesus is not part of saving faith, but the result of it. No sinner can justify himself before God by making a commitment to be faithful or pledging allegiance to God. For sinners are dead in their sins. See Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1. Even after conversion, a believer's appeal to their commitment as a basis for justification would be rejected by God, for the sinner's commitment in this life is always tainted with sin, and God's law will accept nothing less than perfect righteousness for justification. Point six, we are not justified by our works after conversion. Lordship Salvation heretic John Piper, in his 2017 article titled, Does God Really Save Us by Faith Alone?, teaches that we are justified before God by works we do after our conversion. Now that is the Roman Catholic teaching of justification by faith in works. Piper states in his article, and I quote, In final salvation, at the last judgment, faith is confirmed by the sanctifying fruit it has borne, and we are saved through that fruit and that faith." End quote. Piper goes on to deny that the works of Christ alone are necessary for our salvation, and instead, in its place, Piper teaches the Roman Catholic position, and I quote, "...these works of faith and this obedience of faith, these fruits of the Spirit that come by faith, are necessary for our, our final salvation." End quote. This Roman Catholic saying, which has been adopted by all those individuals who believe in justification by faith and works, was rejected by the Protestant confessions during the Reformation. For example, the Lutheran Confession clearly states, quote, Therefore, the following propositions are justly rejected. 1. Good works are necessary for believers to be saved. 2. It is impossible to be saved without good works. End quote taken from the formula of Concord, Solid Declaration, Article 4, Good Works, Negative Statements. Next we come to Lordship Salvation teacher Thomas Schreiner. Schreiner teaches the heresy of Lordship Salvation throughout his entire book titled Faith Alone, The Doctrine of Justification. Now in the foreword of that book, which was written by John Piper, who we just heard from, Piper gets the heretical ball rolling, so to speak, by teaching the Roman Catholic view of double justification and that our salvation is conditioned upon our obedience. After paying lip service to sola fide, Piper states the following, and I quote, He says right with God by faith alone, not attain heaven by faith alone. There are other conditions for attaining heaven, but no others entering a right relationship to God. In fact, one must already be in a right relationship with God, by faith alone, in order to meet the other conditions." End quote. Justification by faith alone, the doctrine of justification, forward, page 11. Now Piper does not tell us how many conditions must be met by Christians to merit their final salvation, and neither does Thomas Schreiner. However, Schreiner teaches justification by faith and works throughout his book, as we mentioned above. For example, Schreiner says the following, and I quote, The New Testament clearly teaches that bare faith cannot save, and that works are necessary for final justification, or final salvation, end quote. Justification by Faith Alone, The Doctrine of Justification, Chapter 16, page 191. If you would like to read a complete refutation of Thomas Schreiner's book, then you can obtain a copy of my book titled Red Flags, I'll place a link to that book in the description box below. Many today do not realize that the Roman Catholic Church officially teaches that we are not justified before God by our works done before conversion. If you think you are a Christian because you reject the notion that your obedience before conversion did not justify you, you are no different than the Pope. What makes Protestants, especially Reformed Protestants, different from Roman Catholics is that we believe that our works, not only before conversion, but after conversion, do not justify us before God. In Galatians, the Apostle Paul condemned the Judaizers for teaching that sinners are justified by doing good works after their conversion. The Judaizers 
thought that believing the gospel was not enough, but that Christians must do the work of being circumcised after coming to faith in Christ. Since the Bible rejects our obedience, performed after believing the gospel as a basis of our justification, Paul wrote the following, and I quote, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you, that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised, that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Christ is become of no effect unto you. Whosoever you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace." Quote. Galatians chapter 5, verses 1-4 through four. For the Galatian believers to adopt the teachings of the Judaizers would mean that their profession of faith would have changed from justification by faith alone, sola fide, to justification by faith and works, the Roman Catholic position. When the Bible says that one professing salvation by belief alone has, quote, fallen from grace, end quote, then it is not saying that a justified believer can lose his salvation. That would logically contradict the Bible's doctrine of the preservation of the saints. See Malachi chapter 3, verse 6, John 10, 28, James 1, 17, for example. The Bible says, quote, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. For the Lord loveth judgment, and forsaketh not his saints, they are preserved forever. End quote. Psalm chapter 37, 23 through 28. What is meant is that these people who once professed sola fide, either one, never actually believed it, or two, they became confused for a time, but God caused them in time to realize their mistake and correct it and grow in knowledge and grace as a result of it such as the Apostle Peter, whom Paul had to confront to his face, Galatians 2, 11-21. God often uses heresy to sharpen the intellects of his people and give them a better understanding of his truth. That being said, let us remember that while Roman Catholicism, the Judaizers, and Lordship Salvation all wrongly teach that men are justified by the works they do after they believe the gospel, True Christianity teaches that we are neither justified by works done before or after we believe the gospel. The Bible says, quote, Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. End quote. Romans 3.28 Another example of this is presented by Jesus himself. Those who come to Jesus appealing to his lordship and their works will be condemned on the last day. Jesus says, and I quote, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. End quote. Matthew chapter 7, verses 22 through 23. If you come to Christ on the last day, professing faith in him as Lord, and appealing to your good works, you will be condemned. Only those are saved who are justified by faith alone, in Christ alone. Point seven. Only those who rest in the blood of Jesus have their sins covered and are entirely forgiven. Only those who believe the perfect work of Christ alone is enough to justify them before God will be saved. Only those who rest in the blood of Jesus have their sins covered and are entirely forgiven. Paul did not consider his righteousness, his obedience, to be a vital part of what caused his salvation. In fact, when it comes to salvation, Paul reckons his obedience to be dung, ineffectual to justify. Paul looked only to the perfect righteousness of Christ alone. Belief alone in the imputed and covering righteousness of Christ alone was sufficient for Paul. This is why the Apostle Paul said, and I quote, Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, 
But that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. End quote. Philippians 3, 8-9 through Because those naturally descending from Adam are born sinful and totally depraved, the law is now no safe way to be justified before God, not in part, not in whole. The Bible says, quote, But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by faith. End quote. Galatians chapter 3, verse 11 This is why Christ's work alone is sufficient to satisfy God's law, and not our commitment to be faithful. Point 8 Certain assurance is had by faith alone in Christ alone. Despite the claims of Lordship salvation, when anyone looks to their own good works for assurance, then that person will necessarily be terrified and afraid. You see, the law terrifies, it kills, and it condemns. This is why the Bible calls the law the ministry of death and condemnation. See 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 6-9. through nine. Despite the testimony of the Bible, Lordship Salvation teacher Paul Washer plays with the idea that Christians may obtain certain assurance of salvation from looking at their sin-tainted works. Rather than teach the Reformed position that certain assurance of salvation is based on believing the gospel of Jesus Christ alone, Paul Washer writes the following, and I quote, A life marked by simple and heartfelt obedience to God's commands may be the most obvious and certain proof of true repentance. End quote. The Gospel Call and True Conversion, chapter 1, page 18. Now, contrary to Paul Washer, the Bible teaches Christians to look to Christ alone for salvation and certain assurance. See Romans chapter 5, verse 1. As Christians, we do not do good works to merit final salvation as Lordship proponents, those such as John Piper and Thomas Schreiner wrongly teach. Rather, the entire work of redemption was entirely finished by Jesus Christ on the cross. See John 19, verse 30. See Hebrews chapter 10, verse 2. And we receive total salvation the very moment the Holy Spirit applies that redemption to us by quickening us to life and creating faith in us. See Romans chapter 4, verse 3. At that point, we are declared righteous by God, based solely on our sins being charged to Christ. Isaiah 53, 6. And His perfect righteousness being imputed to us. Romans 4, 20-25, changing our status from guilty to just the very moment we are given faith. Amen.